Okay, so this is my foundation. Now I want to build on it to get to, remember this is my destination. This is where I want to arrive, okay? So when you have a look at it, what is, and there are multiple choices here, but what do you think is the most obvious thing you could do that could immediately get this to look a little more like this? Is there anything obvious and simple that you could do? Emmanuel, what would you like to suggest? Okay, two to the power of k plus one. Take out the one up, and equals two times two to the power of k. Okay, fantastic. So, just in case you uh, didn't catch that, right? What Emmanuel is focusing on here is the left-hand side, which is smart, right? You know when we do trigonometric identities and we're like, prove this equals this, and you instinctively say, which one is the messier one? Right? Which one's harder? And then I'll simplify from there over to the other side. In this, you're trying to do kind of the opposite. You're like, which side is simpler to work with so that I can get it to the thing that I want? And clearly this, to get to the left-hand side I want, all I need to do is multiply by 2. Index laws, yeah? Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. If I multiply the left-hand side by 2, bam, I'm there. So of course, positive integer, uh, or positive real number rather, I can just multiply the right-hand side by 2 and everything is fine. So I've got this. Oops, what am I doing? Wrong, wrong right-hand side that I'm multiplying by. It's just a k squared. Okay, wonderful. My left-hand side, I can now promptly ignore it. It's in exactly the state that I want, so now I'm going to exclusively play with the right-hand side. I'm going to look at that and think, Okay, true, but now what do I do with it? Remember I said to you on Tuesday, one of the tricky things with inequalities is, they aren't equal, right? So you, this, this obviously does not equal k plus 1 all squared, right? What, what does that equal, by the way? k squared plus 2k plus 1. k squared plus 2k plus 1. I've got that sort of in the back of my brain. I wouldn't normally write this um, because in my brain I'm quite happy with that binomial expansion. But let's just, for the sake of it, let's just jot that down so there's one less thing occupying our prefrontal cortex. This is kind of what I want to get to, sort of. And then you're like, oh, wait a second, this is, well, I can at least see part of that in here, right? Look, I've got 2k squared here, and I need at least one of them, right? So I'm going to write something which I know is going to seem very trivial, but just go with me for a second. I'm going to write that this is greater than k squared plus k squared. Okay with that? Now, I know you're looking at that and thinking, um, <laughs> Mr. Wu, this is extension two. Why are we just like breaking things? This, this is like, this is the opposite of what we were told you to do in year seven. We were like collecting like terms, right? What can I do with this? And I'll admit, it's not obvious. So what was that other, you remember I gave you two cautions at the start of this? I said, watch out, it's an inequality, be careful. What was the other caution I gave you? I even highlighted it on the board. Say it again, GRU, louder so everyone can hear. N is greater than 4. This is crucial, right? I, I need to make use of this fact. And at the moment, I'm just kind of doing generic algebra that doesn't care about this at all, right? Uh, I've stated since n is greater than 4, k is also going to be greater than 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit pause on this. I'm just going to name this inequality. I will return to it in a second. And I'm going to see if, here it is, I'm going to see if this can lend me some insights with this, OK? So I'm going to say k is greater than 4. Hmm, all right, what can I do with this? Well, I'm trying to get to, so you see this k squared is looking good, right? I've got that k squared at the front, so again, I'm having this mentality of, oh, the left-hand side is good, don't touch it. This k squared is good, don't touch it, right? Now I've got to work somehow with this and form some sort of relationship with this. Do you see that? 2k plus 1? over there. Uh, I want you to, th again, think back to Tuesday. We're trying to combine inductions and inequality, which is quite tricky, right? If I can prove that this is bigger than this, let me say that one more time. If I can prove that k squared is bigger than 2k plus 1, I can link together some inequalities here. Does this make sense? If I can say this is, I haven't proved this yet, but if I can say that it's bigger than, whoopsie daisy, k squared plus 2k plus 1, right? If I can establish that relationship, then 2k plus 2 to the k plus 1 must be bigger than this thing, right? You can see how my inequalities link together, okay? So if I can get to that, which is just to do with 2k plus 1 and k squared, 
then I'm kind of there, right? So you kind of have to have in your head like, ah, oh, I'm trying to solve this problem, but it's creating new problems underneath that. So just forget about the original one for a second. That's what I'm doing here by just hitting pause on it. And let's try and focus in on the part that now is revealed, okay? So I'm gonna say two things. Number one, uh, let's go here. K squared, that's what I've got to work with here, right? If I've got this statement about K being bigger than four, what can you tell me about K squared? There's at least a couple of different things you could tell me about it. Any takers? It's less than 2 to the K. <laughs> it's, it's less than 2 to the K because I've got my assumption there. That's great, but I am going to start going in circles here. So I'm not using any new information here, right? So true, but I will put it to one side for now. Uh, if K is bigger than 4, so like K is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. Can you tell me anything numerically about K squared? Bigger than 16. Bigger than 16, very good. Because k multiplied by k, 4 multiplied by 4. That's true, right? Now I could write, again, k squared is bigger than 16, but does that, even though, it's a bit rude of me to sort of do this to you, but does that help me, does that fact, k squared greater than 16, help me try and get to here? See what I'm trying to prove? k squared is bigger than this object up here. Does 16 help me with that very much? The answer is not as much as I'd like, because I could say that it's true, but then, well, this thing has sort of disappeared, right? I no longer have k's in there to play with. So instead of saying k squared is greater than 16, which is true, I'm going to say that it's bigger than 4k. Are you all right with that? I just multiply both sides by k? You shouldn't be. <laughs> you can't just multiply both sides by k. k is a pronumeral. These are inequalities that we're dealing with, right? We know that inequalities have direction. Why can I say this? I can, but why? Because it's, it's, yeah, it's positive, yeah? Be so careful with inequalities. There are so many little like potholes you can walk into, right? So I'm multiplying both sides. It's why Calvin was right to say, I can multiply them both by four, that's fine. But to multiply by k, you've got to be careful. I'm going to say since k is positive, okay? Now, why is this useful to me? This is going to help me get toward this thing that I wanted. I'm going to try and play a similar trick to what I did here. Do you remember that? I was like, oh, I got 2k squared. I want at least one of them to just come to the side because it's here. What can I do to this thing? It's almost an identical trick, in fact. What can I do to it that is more helpful than what's written right now? Yeah, I'm trying to get to 2k plus 1, right? There's a 2k in there. In fact, there's... There's two of them, right? So I'm going to write 2k plus 2k. Now maybe finally, like we're almost at the floor. Okay, we're finally almost at the bottom. I want that to be a 1, don't I? If I, if I make that a 1, I'm, I'm, I'm there. Is 2k, is that bigger than 1? It is, but how did you know? Because k is bigger than 0. Ah, k is, well k is bigger than 0, but more importantly, if k was equal to 0, then this is not bigger than 1, is it, right? But in fact, like the smallest this can possibly be is, uh, it's, it's 10, right? 2k, right? So it's, 10 is way bigger than 1, right? So, but how do I say that? Like you've now sort of pieced it together in your mind. How do I actually like provide the logic for that, right? I'd go back up to this line over here. That's what you just rested on, k is bigger than 4. So that means that 2k is bigger than 8, right? So therefore, over here, I can say that is bigger than 2k plus 8. Did you see what I just did? Pause on it, because actually a lot just went into that, right? I got to this point here where I had a bit that I wanted, and then this other thing, which I, I know it's bigger than one, but how do I prove that, right? Well, I went back to this earlier fact that was part of my assumption, right? K is bigger than four, two K is bigger than eight. And so I can say, well, I'm gonna replace this with something smaller. This is on the smaller side, this is on the bigger side. So that's why my inequality flows in that direction. Along with me? So then, next line, let's not have too many inequalities linked together. I've established that K squared is bigger than two K plus eight. But of course, that's bigger than, what's the thing that I wanted? 2k plus 1, very good. Okay, so what have I got here? k squared is bigger than 2k plus 1. We've gone way off the garden path here. Like, what were we even proving at the beginning? We've taken quite a distance. So that's why I can now say, let's return. Let's come back here, right? I know that this thing, 
right here relates to here. That's where I'm putting it. Okay? So I can say substituting into, remember I hit pause on it, right? Substituting into 1. What have I got? Let's just write it out as it is. 2 to the k plus 1 is bigger than k squared plus k squared. But I've just said that one of those k squareds will be bigger than 2k plus 1. You following so far? I know there's a lot that we're holding in our brains. k squared plus 2k plus 1. We're finally coming back out of the hole, okay? Because now I can factorize that thing and I'm pretty much home and hosed. So let's write that 2k, 2 to the k plus 1. I'll just write that before I've factorized because I'm actually doing something here from this linked inequality. I'm going to a, a different one. Now I'll factorize. And I've run out of space on the bottom of the board, so let's just talk through what, we're, what we need to do, right? This is the k plus 1 case, right? I've used the assumption. I've used this particular property that, that k and n have to have. And I've arrived at a proof that the k plus 1 case is true if the k case is true. So you would conclude. You'd say, therefore, true by the principle of mathematical induction. How is your brain at the moment? So is it doing all right? Questions? Yeah. Question. Yeah, please. Uh, this method seems logical to me, mm -hmm. but I wonder I can I can I can I can do this thing exactly in Excel. So can I just move all the things like you you have two to the power of k plus one bigger than k k plus one squared? Uh, can I just move it to the left hand side and say it's larger than zero rather than? All this stuff. Yeah, okay, so right at the start of this, I said you can do a bunch of different things, right? There's a, a bunch of different ways to approach this, okay? I said on Tuesday that one of the classic ways we go about proving inequalities is like use sign, positive and negative, right? And that generally is like in other proofs, I will do exactly that, right? So as an idea, I'm okay with that. The particular thing you just said, the particular thing you just said, you absolutely cannot say, and I want to wonder if you guys can help me work out why. Suppose, I, I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to try to prove. My next line is, I'm going to begin my proof, and then I write this, and you're the marker. This is what I write. If you're the marker, you should raise some red flags instantly. Doesn't matter what's coming after this. Why? Xiao, you do you want to have a stab? We are required to prove that 2 power of 2k plus, uh, plus 1 greater than k plus 1 squared. Mm -hmm. And if we did that step, we actually assume this is true. Very good. Did you catch that, right? I'm going to apply some logic to this thing, right? I'm going to start working on it. But, like, I'm working on a foundation of this which I don't actually yet know to be true. That's my job, right? Now, the strategy is still not overall a bad idea, so how could we amend this strategy, use the basic idea, but not commit a logical fallacy while we're at it? Morgan. Okay, I could consider. What's the thing I'm going to consider, though? I'd still rather not consider a thing that I do not know to be true. So, this, this part here, this is the thing you're going to work on anyway, right? You're going to ignore that zero, more or less, right? So just, just work with that thing. Consider the left-hand side, take away the right-hand side, do some work on it, hopefully you can get there. By the way, in this particular example, it's a bit of a pain. <laughs> um, these two don't like mixing together, but then you're going to use your um, assumption at some point, like line three or line four. Okay? So, overall strategy, okay, but just be careful about the way that you do it. You want to make sure you don't end up assuming what you're trying to prove. Uh, this is a book that Mrs. Lees and I flagged in your assessment task, in your interest piece, right? So, uh, Infinite Powers by Stephen Strogatz. Um, there's a section in here that I want to read to you because I hope it gives you an additional sense of appreciation and value for why mathematical induction matters. Uh, before I get to this, I need to tell you why I used to hate mathematical induction when I was your age. I hated mathematical induction because I thought, what is the point of this? Right? What is the point? You begin with this thing, you already know it's true. Like you wouldn't be doing this question unless I already knew or some other mathematician told you this thing is true. And then we make you jump through these elaborate hoops and hurt your brain to prove it even though we already knew it 
from the beginning. This is very different to say, you know, you guys are very well aware Mrs. Lee's in a past life was an engineer. Engineers all the time have to solve problems where the, the conclusion, we don't know what the conclusion is, that's why we're trying to solve the problem. And then you arrive at something and you're like, oh cool, now I can build my bridge, now I know my building will sub, you know, sustain the wind shear forces because I've done the dot product, all that kind of thing, right? So that's nice. But here, what's the point of like going through all this effort to arrive at something you already established? Let me read from Stephen Strogatz. He says, he's talking about uh, Isaac Newton and him introducing calculus, which is what the book is about. Um, and Newton's really upset with uh, this guy named, you might know him, Rene Descartes. He was, he was actually upset with Leibniz as well. Newton got in arguments with everyone. He was just an angry guy. <laughs> anyway, he's attacking Descartes, and I'll explain why he's attacking him. In launching his attack, Newton was adhering to a, to a traditional distinction between analysis and synthesis. What are those? You've not heard those phrases in a mathematical context. In analysis, one solves a problem by starting at the end, as if the answer had already been obtained, and then works back wishfully towards the beginning, hoping to find a path to the given assumptions. Does, do you see what's going on here? This is what analysis is. Like, oh, if you already know the answer, you can apply some logic, because someone else told you this should work out, and you hope that it will work. In fact, Stephen Shogatz continues, it's what kids in school think of as working backward from the answer to figure out how to get there. Okay, That's analysis. Synthesis goes in the other direction. It starts with the givens, and then by stabbing in the dark, trying things, you're somehow supposed to move forward to a solution, step by logical step, and eventually arrive at the desired result. Synthesis tends to be much harder than analysis because you don't ever know how you're going to get to the solution until you do. And this is where he concludes. The ancient Greeks regarded synthesis, that's the second one, where you're like, I'm not sure, I'm just going to stab in the dark. They regarded synthesis as carrying more logical force, more persuasive power than analysis. Uh, synthesis was considered the only way to prove a result. Analysis was a practical way to find the result. If you wanted a rigorous demonstration, you had to do synthesis. And then it goes back to talk about um, Archimedes, which is the subject of the first chapter of this book, who he wasn't so great about this um, proving stuff, but he knew intuition to work out what the answer should be. So Archimedes was the kind of person who came up with this. But then people looked at these results and they're like, yeah, but how do you know? You have to actually apply all this rigorous logic here. Here's why it matters, right? We make you go through all these hoops because this is how knowledge progresses, right? It would be really hard if I said to you, hey, uh, just find out what 2 dn is bigger than. <laughs> just go for it. Find out, right? Or prove that it's bigger than n squared. And I didn't tell you where. I mean, in this particular case, it's not that hard. Graph it, off you go. But what if you just didn't know? You really have to stab around in the dark, and often we get there by methods that are, well, intui intuitive, like I think this will get there, and they're not proof, they're not rigorous, but this is. This is why we make you put so much effort into proving things that we actually already know to be true. Usually we actually aren't sure, but we apply the logic, and if the logic holds, it's watertight.